to mesh a new group this year. Seven newcomers, only six returners. Meanwhile, on the other side, it is Heather Osterley. Her fourth season as the head coach at Central Michigan has been on staff for 13 years, spent nine seasons underneath Sue Guevara at Michigan. The opening tap belongs to Georgia Tech, and Tony Morgan, the freshman, corrals it, turning the keys over to Bianca Jackson, who served as a defunct point guard for the Jackets as they still try and flesh out their half-court offense this year. And you see teams have been consist consistent playing Georgia Tech in this zone defense. And Tech has had trouble trying to play out of it, but still trying to work within their offense to get shots. Yeah, Tech has maxed out with 66 points offensively this year. Here's a look at the starting five for Central Michigan. One notable change, Lisa Tesson makes her second start of the season, first since November 12th. Uh, Coach Osterley said she was one of the few bright spots in their loss to Cleveland State earlier this week. Rebound controlled by Lee Lee Love. Yellow Jackets employed the same starting lineup they've had now in three straight games. It's worked well for them. Aisha Wohn out of Nas, the latest addition to that lineup, earns a second chance opportunity for the Jackets. And yeah, you see Coach Fordner trying to change the lineup a little bit. Wohn out of Nas getting the start instead of Armosa, but Armosa's a great asset to come off the bench. Hopefully it'll get her going. She had a, a great showing against Central Michigan a season ago. Wohn out of Nas. Off the window and in. Georgia Tech with the first points. Fallon, what are your keys for this afternoon's game? Well, for Central Michigan, they need to defend the paint and protect the basketball. Right now, they're averaging 21 turnovers a game, and they know Georgia Tech's going to try and pound it in and get shots in the paint. And for Georgia Tech, they need to push the basketball. They're not averaging a lot of points on the fast break. Right now, 7.1 per game. And turn their defense into offense. That's been critical. When they're slow to find something within their own system, just like Tony Morgan did, find defense to turn it into offense. Tony Morgan, the team's third leading scorer behind the transfers, Cameron Swartz and Bianca Jackson. Four-nothing Tech. Central Michigan out of the gate, 0 for 3. Off the glass, and that's too strong on the scoop from Tesson. But how about an offensive rebound from Rochelle Norris? She's a massive key for Central Michigan today. She is, and that's going to be the battle for Won Ananas and Armosa. They're going to have to battle her and box out because she's going to be aggressive and try and get rebounds for the Central Michigan team. Cameron Swartz, former Boston College Eagle, tries an entry pass. It's denied by Norris. Chippewa is getting out and running. Norris runs the length of the court, everything but the finish. Good effort. And Georgia Tech is very lucky because they had nobody back. Great hustle by Bianca Jackson to alter that shot a bit. Quarter three for Cameron Swartz. She's done that all season long. And she's just fun to watch. Can change the energy in her second with her quick, fast-paced shooting. And that was just a showing of it with that corner three she was able to knock down. And she's really been the only jacket who's hit that shot consistently this year. They're among the bottom three in the AC series three-point shooting. That's a number that's going to have to improve moving forward. And three-second violation on Norris. That'll be a turnover. Well, look at that energy from Won on Nas <laughs> over there. But Schwartz in the quarter, wide open. You got to find her early. And she knocks down the three to get on the board in this one. Jackets have hit their last three shots. 7-2 lead. Bianca Jackson, a transfer from Florida State. This is her sixth year of college basketball. Began her career at South Carolina. And Fallon, you were telling me, I, I think Bianca didn't expect to play this large of a role on this year's team, but she has been money <laughs> missing that jumper. Well, you know, she transferred in, and the expectations were a little higher than maybe she anticipated. But <laughs> she's done a great job taking on this point guard role for Georgia Tech until they can get more comfortable or Tony Morgan can get more comfortable in that role. But she's going to ask that defensively and offensively for Georgia Tech, really giving them a defensive presence and leadership. Norris steps on the sideline. She had her third school as well, began at West Virginia, and then last year was at Virginia Tech but did not play. She'll take a seat, our first sub of the afternoon. There's a couple of them. It's going to be Taylor Anderson, the freshman from South Lyon, Michigan, checking in. And also Nadej Jean, 22 in Maroon. Central Michigan, they have a different lineup, similar to Georgia Tech, really trying to adapt. You know, they have five players returning from a season ago, but didn't really get a lot of minutes. So it's been an adjustment 
for them this season. And a jump ball underneath the basket. Session will belong to the Chippewas. And, you know, with a team that's one in seven, Fallon, you'd imagine they're going to shuffle their starting lineup around a little bit, try and find something that's working. So, uh, like this, like we mentioned at the top of the show, Lisa Tisson making her second start of the year. And they've already had seven different players start at least one game this season. Yeah, and that's because of the inconsistencies, injuries happen, you just don't know. But when you're trying to see what your chemistry is with the new team, transfers, freshmen coming in, it's going to take time to get that adjustment and to get working. But Central Michigan, they have a couple of freshmen on this squad that can score the basketball. Weeks layup no good, and now we got a foul on Central Michigan. That'll be charged to Nadez Jean. Yeah, Sydney Harris thought she got the foul and escaped that one so she didn't pick up her first early in this one, but she's been quiet to start this game, leading score for Central Michigan, and Georgia Tech's done a good job to start out early on her. Yeah, the team, Central Michigan one for seven from the floor, but Harris taking only one shot. Lily Love who had a fine game against Central Michigan last year, 15 points. But that one well short. A little over the head, hook pass into the corner. Now it's Jean, she turns it over. Swartz will get out and run, now she slows the pace. That's one thing Georgia Tech tends to rely on with their half-court offense. They do a lot. They do not run and try and get easy points in the open court. And that's something that I, Coach Fortner wants to see, a great aggressive move right there by Aaliyah Love. See if she can go to the free throw line and knock down two shots. Lily Love going to the line, seven to two. Georgia Tech with the edge halfway through the first quarter. The Central Michigan Chippewas from Mount Pleasant, Michigan, a team that was really the class of the MAC only a couple of years ago. They won four straight regular season conference titles, and then the following year won the tournament title. They had actually reached four, well, had received bids to four consecutive NCAA tournaments. The 2020 tourney, of course, did not happen because of COVID, but speaking of COVID, that was really a, a curveball for everyone involved, but hit Central Michigan especially hard. Uh, they just have sort of struggled to recover and rebound going through that process as Love hoists her first free throw and hits it. And found this is a team that has an experienced staff, and it, not only in, in Heather Osterley, who was an assistant for the rise of this program, but also some former players on that staff. It's just a matter of time before they turn it around. And they just need time. The adjustment, COVID hit a lot of teams hard, and especially with the transfer portal now, where kids are easily, if they're not happy in a situation or if they want to move on and move closer to home, they can transfer and play right away. So it's taking time to adjust, but once we get out of this COVID period, I'm sure you're going to see better pr production as we continue to from Central Michigan, just like that three right there. Uh-huh, and that's one of the reasons for optimism, isn't it? Bridget Upberg is playing here in her home state out of Canton, Georgia. Her old high school coach, Regina Tate, is in the stands. Yeah, Regina Tate, one of my former teammates yes. in the building, <laughs> her high school coach. So this is great to see a homecoming for her. So I know she wants to have a good game and a good showing. Lunging on the floor, and she almost goes face first into the courtside seats on the baseline. She's a hard-nosed player. That's, she is. that's Regina Tate right there, that isn't is. it? That's G. That's G all day. <laughs> Jackson, ooh, close to a backcourt violation. She stopped right on the timeline. Central Michigan, two of eight from the floor. The Jackets uh, slightly better, three of nine. Other team shooting the lights out, though. Sports couldn't dial up that three. This is Weeks. Sydney Harris, ooh, just a hair too strong. Offensive rebound over the Chippewas. Good contest on the backside by Jackson. That was great. That We talked about her defense. She is always going to play hard, gets a hand on that ball, probably blocks it and alters, alters that shot a bit. And Georgia Tech able to recover and get the rebound. Swartz uses the ball screen, hangs at Jay and drills it. And that was a good job, and she could have had an and one almost because she got fouled going off of that screen, but able to still keep her composure and knock down that J. She was the ACC's most improved player last year at Boston College, transfers to Georgia Tech. And well, she's a score improvement. She led the ACC in scoring a season ago in mm -hmm. conference play at 19 points a game. So Ooh. that's a lot of buckets. Oh. <laughs> and this is another player that can put them up too. We were, 
she, as soon as she missed that first three, her hands were already up to get it back. And then comes down on this possession of that last one and knocks down all net. She has hit 17 of her last 34 three-pointers. That's 50% on the mark. And just a freshman. So that's scary to see. And again, that goes back to, you know, the future of the Chippewa program. You know, it's not going to take long for them to get back to where they were accustomed to being in the last decade. And that was a tough miss by Aaliyah Love inside, but this was a knockdown right here by Sydney Harris. Just moves the ball and lets it fly right over Bianca Jackson. And she is a pure shooter, has a nice shot, nice touch, and has been the most consistent scorer for this Central Michigan team this season. She scored over 2,000 points at Edwardsville High School in Illinois. As we said, just a freshman leads the team in scoring, three-point shooting. In fact, no player in the MAC has taken and made more threes this year, though. <laughs> she's already yes. hit her career high <laughs> yeah. for tips of 16 in a game. So she's not shy. And right there, she was just a few steps in, but she's starting to get a rhythm. Georgia Tech needs to find her early and, and stop the ball from getting into her hands within Central Michigan's offensive sets. Well, those 16 threes, that came in the season opener. That was that was her collegiate debut oh. when she let it fly. Hey, she wasn't <laughs> fearless. That's what you say about that one. So Central Michigan's got it down to one. The Jackets have missed six of their last seven shots. Now Chippewa's had a chance to take the lead. Nice feed down low. Beautiful left hand. Rochelle Norris and the pass from Bridget Upberg. Yeah, Upberg, that was a nice look. She led her teammate straight to the basket to make that shot an easy finish. And right now, Central Michigan has the lead against Georgia Tech with a minute and a half left in the first quarter. 7-0 run, Rhea Hermosa, her first touch. And it's gonna be a foul against Central Michigan. That'll be charged to Rochelle Norris. Take a look at these last couple of shots. First, the pure stroke from Harris, and then check out this pass. Great pass. It was a lead. And then she got her on the backside, open hand, led her to the basket. And then you have the nice finish by Norris. And Bianca Jackson just ran a whole circle around the low block and lays it in on the right side. So Tech back out in front. Snaps a 7-0 run for Central Michigan. Approaching the final minute of the first quarter. Kira Dunn guarding the ball here. Pestering upward, freshman on freshman. Ooh, and that might be on Rochelle Norris. Cameron Swartz is saying she took an elbow to the chin, but it's going to be against the Jackets. It's going to be on Swartz. Yeah, we'll have to watch that replay, but Cameron Swartz was falling back as if she got hit around the chin area with an elbow, but instead gets called for the foul and has to be subbed out. First foul against Georgia Tech. 60 seconds left in this first quarter. Michigan's played a nice last three or four minutes. And Ray Hermosa showing a presence down low. That's a key for her. That was good defense by Hermosa, but I think it was even better denial by Blackshear mm -hmm. on Sydney Harris, so she couldn't get the basketball. Okay, the Blackshear transfer from Alabama. Takes a short corner jumper. It won't go. And a jump ball underneath. It'll be Yellow Jacket basketball. Nice job of tying up Kira Dunn. Well, good effort by Taylor Anderson. Yeah, you can't back, bring that basketball down once you're attempting to get the rebound. And just a difficult tie-up for Dunn. But fortunately for Georgia Tech, they maintain the possession. Lisa Tesson back on the floor. Brittany Upper gets a breather. Baseline inbounds. Triggered by Jackson. With good active hands. Deflected the pass. Jackson from the free throw line. Buries it. Mm. And that was a smart decision by Jackson. She was well behind the three-point line, could have shot that three, but she took a couple dribbles in to take the shot that she was comfortable in taking and knocks down that mid-range jack. Central Michigan can hold for the final shot. Tesson down the lane, blocked by Blackshear. The second look, no. Jackets with the rebound. Dunn will not get the shot off, and that is the end of the first quarter. Georgia Tech, a 15 to 12 lead after 10 minutes in Midtown Atlanta. A Sunday afternoon of ACC hoops. Happy you are with us wrapping up the weekend on ACC Network Extra.
from the very day. Well, Kara Dunn, she's just an athlete. Right? Coach Ford is very excited to have her on this Georgia Tech roster. Has had her in the starting lineup a couple of times, but mainly has had her coming off the bench in the last few games. But she's still trying to find her rhythm. But Coach Ford is excited about what Kara Dunn can bring to this Georgia Tech team. Maria Hermosa disrupts the pass, a lob down to the baseline. The extra pass to Hermosa, last touched by the Yellow Jackets. And she sees it. She said it right there. That was my bad. But it was a good decision for a freshman. She knew she was about to fall out of bounds. Try and pass. She tried to pass it to a cutting Hermosa who couldn't grab it. But you have to reward or applaud Central Michigan for getting back and deflecting that basketball. Brittany Upberg from Canton, Georgia. She says she's got about 30 family members and friends in the stands this afternoon. Baseline reverse, and before she got the shot off, Weeks draws the foul against Boswell. And Central Michigan, they're just continuing to still play, run their offensive sets, and see what they can score within those sets. Georgia Tech has to do a better job of deflect, getting deflections and try to limit Central Michigan's touches inside the paint. Here's another good look. Nice poise by Nadej Jajan, waiting for the defender to rise, leave her feet, and then got an easy lay-in. She did, and that was a nice, another nice cut to the basket. Good look and a finish by Central Michigan around the rim. From high loho down to Blackshear, nearly walked with it. Hermosa, six foot five. Didn't have to reach very far for that rebound. She yeah. gets the second chance points. Well, the ref missed the call right there. I was with <laughs> uh, Coach Osterley. That was a travel, but Georgia Tech able to recover almost right there to get that lay-in. We can coach here, Coach Osterley agreeing with us here. And now that's going to be called a travel. <laughs> Osterley with a side grin right in our direction. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's kind of early. This is a 1 o'clock call. Everybody's still trying to get their eyes open a little bit. But this was a nice cut and then finish right there by John. And then you see Armosa on the other end capitalizes after the miss, gets the offensive rebound and put back. So a six-point lead. Inez Noreto, her first minutes of the day, 22 in white. And that's a double dribble on Tony Morgan. Turnover for the Yellow Jackets. Mel Fortner. One's coming back. Yeah, I don't think it's been a perfect first month and a half of the season, but I think she's appreciated the effort her team has put forth. And you know, you've won, you've won seven of nine games, your two losses against Georgia in South Florida. Some nice wins on the road against Michigan State and Auburn. Yeah. yeah. How would you assess the first nine games of Georgia Tech season? I think it's solid. I mean, they're in a position where they're not unhappy about being in. This is a different team. It could be a lot worse, especially with that road trip, coming back 4-1. and one. That's excellent. Um, or a good job, solid job to get some road victories in a grueling schedule. But the win against Auburn, Auburn I think has an RPI of about 89. And then mm -hmm. with Michigan State, their RPI is not bad either to go and get road wins in the ACC Big Ten Classic. I think it's the last season we're doing mm -hmm. that. Or, George, or the ACC is yes. doing that. But that was... Those were two big wins for Georgia Tech to get on the road. Will be an ACC-SEC challenge next year, though. I like that. Uh -huh. They used to do that when I played. Really? It was something we used to play in the Peach Bowl. So it was okay. our, we always played Georgia. So yeah, that's okay. what that may that may be where that end up. Uh huh. But hopefully it's some different competition because I think it just brings so many more looks and opportunities for both leagues to get exposure for their players. And I know Bianca Jackson's not a natural point guard, but that was a pretty nice pass to find her most about midway down the lane. Oh, she has a good eye. I mean, she's a point forward. You know, she can do both and play multiple positions, but she has a good eye. If someone makes a move and cuts, she'll find you. Central Michigan's missed a few too many threes here early. Two for seven. And pried loose by the Chippewas defense. Nice job denying the back door. Georgia Tech trying to return the favor. Are they going to get Blackshear for reaching in, or will that be on Armosa? It's going to be on Blackshear. Yeah, I would say that was on Blackshear. Armosa was straight up and got a hand on that basketball when Harris was trying to shoot. But that was a nice steal by Sidney Harris going down. You see Blackshear trying to get it from behind, but that was all ball by Armosa. Just a reach in 
by Blackshear trying to sweep in from behind. Sydney Harris at the line. Two-time All-State. Sydney Harris is an athlete herself. She was a standout in volleyball as well. So you can tell has good stature, good size for a freshman. And it's not half bad <laughs> at her size and stature being able to shoot the three ball like she does. About six minutes left in the first half. Jacket stretched out here. Won't out and out trying to go to work down low. Now Love, free throw line, back rim, front rim, and out. But you'll take that shot because she looked confident in taking it, and that's in her range, and it just didn't fall like she would have wanted. But that was a good shot by Lily Love. Turnover for Central Michigan, that's their seventh. They are averaging 21 turnovers a night now. I mean, that's the quickest way you can see some improvements if they're able to cut that number down. You're right. Um, that's a lot of turnovers. And when you think about it, you know, with Georgia Tech, they're about at 15 or 16 turnovers a game. But 21, that's high. And you want to get that number down. Cameron Swartz drills the three and she'll go to the line for one more. I tell you, this kid can shoot in bunches. And nice screen by Won Ananas to open her up. And Central Michigan, totally late. Cameron Schwartz foul, knocks down the three and gets the foul. Freshman Taylor Anderson probably better serve just to let that one go yeah. instead of trying to close out late. Yeah, you never want to foul a jump mm -hmm. shooter, especially a three-point shooter like Schwartz. So a four-point play. Eight-point lead for Georgia Tech. And that just really changed, oh, turned yeah. the tides. I oh, mean, yeah. without yeah. that four-point play, Central Michigan was looking at being four points behind. Mm -hmm. Now it's jumped to eight. Largest lead of the afternoon for Georgia Tech so far. Harris goes down low to Janea Walker. Walker triggers a three, left it short. Rebound belongs to Lily Love. And that was good defense by Georgia Tech. They were very active on that defensive possession, pushing Central Michigan out and not allowing them to be in their comfort zone to get a shot inside. Bianca Jackson trying to find Schwartz. Harris doing everything she can to lock her down. So Jackson forced to put it up herself, and she hits it. Oh, man, that's just what it's like being a born scorer, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, when you can go and get a basket when you need to, like Jackson can, that's a big deal. And as she was coming off the screen, Swartz had a nice cut. She missed her, but decided to take it on two Central Michigan players and knocks down the fadeaway J. That's a 6-0 run for the Jackets in the last minute. We'll step aside. 4.46 left in the first half. ACC play begins one week from today in Fallon. Those are two faces in Norea Hermosa and Lili Love that are going to have to step up their game moving forward if the Jackets want to make some hay in conference play. They each averaged double-digit points last year, Fallon, but this season uh, that scoring output hasn't quite been there. It hasn't. And when you have two upperclassmen to have a downfall in scoring like they have, you know, it is some concern because you were counting on that consistency or you know, for them to continue to develop and improve. But, you know, it's the change up in the, in the offense as well as in the lineup. And they're having to adjust, bringing in a player like Cameron Schwartz as well as Bianca Johnson, who are going to get a lot of shots too, mm -hmm. shots that may be taken from the shots that they were getting a season ago. So they have to find their niche, continue to adjust. But I think the key is to be aggressive, and it'll come. It'll and this come. is a team, as you pointed out, Fallon, that is – playing without two All-Americans that they had last year in Lodamai Lawton and, and Lorella Kubai, who really were the nucleus of, of the success Georgia Tech has had here recently. And furthermore, you know, it's not just not having those as scoring options, but there, there's a certain level of comfort that comes with playing like players like that. Oh, it does. I mean, especially on the defensive end, when you have somebody like Lorella Kubai at 6'5 in the paint, that takes a lot of pressure off you defensively that you have that backup if you get beat or anything happens like that but offensively it's still about being aggressive finding taking good shots and you know capitalizing on the opportunities when they present themselves 
So a 7-0 run for the Yellow Jackets. That's a big third foul on Rochelle Norris. They're already without their best player, Jahari Smith, who's a forward at six foot one. Norris standing six foot five, and that's been a problem for her this year. She fouled out against Cleveland State, played just 11 minutes mm. in their last game. She's going to probably just sit on the bench the rest of this first half now with three. Well, this is going to be big. Right there, Won't on and Oz giving a good big presence to Bianca Jackson, but they're having difficulty, Georgia Tech is, to get the ball inside. you got to applaud Central Michigan's defense on that possession. They did a great job, active hands, getting deflections. Another kick ball. Good activity underneath by Central Michigan. And so much of, you know, what the Chippewas are trying to instill, you know, beyond just the wins and losses, especially in the non-conference, is trying to be more physical. That, right. that is such a huge key for them and their success. Ooh, man, that's a smooth stroke, isn't it? Yeah, it, it might need to go to, uh, you know, uh, one person being on Cameron Swartz and face guarding her because she's getting open and knocking down shots. 11-point lead for Georgia Tech. We'll step aside. Back in a moment from McCamish Pavilion. Nine life and First scorer in double digits tonight, Cameron Swartz. And, you know, she's been in a hot streak today, Fallon. Here's a look at her numbers. Four for six from the floor. She's hit a couple of threes. Yeah, she has been getting after it this afternoon early in this one, but... She has that shot going and is continuing with, with the streak where she's averaging 18 points in the last two. Looking like she's going to meet that average this afternoon. When Kayla Blackshear, I mean, I know that'll show up as a steal in the box score, but that's not usually where your eye first goes. She just fills up all those other categories, steals, blocks, deflections if you track those. Second chance points, Kara Dunn. And that's what you like about Kara Dunn. Even if she's not getting the basketball. She is active and athletic enough to go get an offensive rebound and a putback. And that was a showing of that, a possession of go. Tiana Tempe. First time we've seen her. She's a strong three-point shooter. Upberg lets it fly from the wing. Oh, and the net hardly moved. Man, these freshmen can shoot the basketball. And Upberg is right behind Harris. She can knock down threes, too. Already has her career high so far, knocking down seven this season in a game. Mm -hmm. That snaps an 11-0 run for Georgia Tech. Blackshear, high-low, Dunn, easy two points. And right now, Dunn is just having great success working those short corners and getting touches and going straight to the basket aggressively and then capitalizing by scoring in the paint. Makes things a little easier with Rochelle Norris on the bench with those three fouls. It does. It's opened up that lane. Mm -hmm. Entry down low, and that's another pass. A little more wingspan, might be able to bring it down. Good effort by Nadez Sean, though. Coach Ford and her butts, and, and how about a director of basketball operations in there, Ashley Via Real? She actually came to Georgia Tech from Central Michigan. She did. Shot clock winding down. And a steal for Georgia Tech. Another turnover for Central Michigan. That's their 10th of this first half. Done down low. And nearly automatic down there until Jean contested that one. And that was a good pass by Jackson in seeing it. Dunn just couldn't finish, but Central Michigan getting back. Good positioning by Bianca Jackson to get that rebound. Two minutes to go in the first half. Jackson turns on the Jets and fouled before she got the shot off. And that was a good decision by Jackson. She realized that it was a defender guarding her, but was opening or guiding her straight to the lane. And she just decided to be aggressive and took it and able to draw the foul going to the free throw line for two shots. But that's what Georgia Tech has now in Jackson and Schwartz. When they need a basket, they have two players that can go and get you a bucket or at least draw contact so they can go to the free throw line for two that last foul against Anika Weeks. That's her first. Jackson at the free throw line this year. Shooting over 80%, a rare miss from her. Yeah, as a team this season, Georgia Tech's shooting 74% from the free throw line. And in years past, we mm. have not said that. That they, is a I don't, drastic <laughs> improvement. They have not been over 70%, but those two players joining Georgia Tech's ball club, that's something that they have brought to the table, Schwartz and Jackson, 
consistent free throw shooting. Well, Tony Morgan made some aggressive defense there, but should be whistled for the foul, taking down Sidney Harris. I'm sure when Sydney Harris got on campus, she knew playing time was a possibility, but I mean, she is the only Chippewa to start every game this year. Mm -hmm. And unsurprisingly, has played the most minutes of any player on Central Michigan squad. So she has uh, had to have some broad shoulders as a true freshman. Deanna Tempe, that three-pointer is short. Veteran move by Cameron Swartz. Yeah, that was a veteran move. She saw that she was falling out of bounds Central Michigan player right on her heels, and she's able to deflect that basketball out of bounds off of Central Michigan. Morgan looking to get trapped there at the timeline by Upberg and Anderson. Baseline, oh, so quick, Kayla Blackshear. And you see the difference, especially with Norris out of this lineup. Georgia Tech having a field day and being aggressive going to the paint and now finishing at the basket. A 16 to three run over the last four minutes, which almost coincides perfectly with when Norris left the game with that third foul. Just a bad decision on that last possession by Tempe. Knocked loose on the drive. Lob pass ahead. Upberg one on two. Oh, good touch. Not good an finish. easy layup. I mean, I like this kid. She plays hard. She knew she had swords right there. Another Georgia Tech player trailing. And she just adjusted and got the basketball high on the glass and was able to finish in the open court. Speaking of freshmen starting every game, she started every game but one. And the one game she didn't start, Utberg had 21 points off the bench. Oh, yeah, that's when she knocked down seven threes. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Look, that was a field day. I guess she was like, yeah, you're not going to pull me out of this again. <laughs> it's the last time I come off the bench. All right, five seconds to shoot. Morgan can't hit the layup. Central Michigan wants to slow it down. And they'll hold for a final shot. Utberg looking for Harris to flash. Blackshear pestering her. Morgan, a half court heave. It will count. And that ends the first half. Georgia Tech, a 15 point lead. Fallon, pretty good work here returning home. That was pretty good work. I'm surprised Tony Morgan didn't knock that half court shot down. They practice that at practice all the time. That they do. And she's um, hit it a couple times. But no, great showing from Georgia Tech in the first half. Good lead going into half. And then won a couple other big road games at Auburn and Michigan State at Belmont. In fact, they beat Belmont twice, once in that tournament, and the other was at Belmont last Sunday. Right, and that was in a matter of three games yeah. they played Belmont twice, so <laughs> that's tough. And then to go to Tennessee to beat Belmont, mm -hmm. that was a good, solid win. Cameron Swartz turns it over. Upper behind the back dribble trying to find some space. But then again, for Georgia Tech right now, it's finals time, so it's good to get on the court and get some aggression out when you have to study <laughs> the type of finals they have to take here at Georgia Tech, so... Yeah, what better way to spend your Sunday than playing some basketball? Yeah, we're, we're right in the middle of finals, too. I, you know, back when you were playing, I assume it was just Monday through Friday, right? I assume so, yeah. It's been so I long ago, Wiley. Don't put me <laughs> on blast like that too soon. I'm just <laughs> no, but um, yeah, it was Monday through Friday. I don't even know the schedule. I thought they yeah. would have been finished by now, but they said, nope, they just started on Friday, so they'll have finals next week. Yeah, they try and spread it over a weekend of the last, I think that started five, six years ago, maybe? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm way removed from that. And, and you're and you not upset about that? I don't no, think. no. I, I don't want to take another test today in my life. <laughs> so Central Michigan gets a bucket on their first trip. A couple empty possessions for the Yellow Jackets. Let's see if the Chippewas can cut into this lead. Morris back on the floor. A little pick and roll action, and Norris called for the travel. Yeah, she had the basketball and just moved that pivot foot slightly before taking the dribble, but you can just see Norris is really trying to be aggressive. Coach Osterly is happy to have her back in the lineup after she picked up the two quick fouls in the first half, but she was a presence for them, and hopefully Central Michigan can, can get something going again offensively. She's kind of had a, lot, a bit of a stop and start career. You know, her uh, freshman season back in West Virginia, she, she did not compete. She got a medical red shirt. That was the 2018-2019 year. Then played uh, another year, or another couple years in West Virginia. 
and then did not play last year. She transferred to Virginia Tech, was out with injury. DeAndre Jackson buries a three. I mean, that was just bad defense by Central Michigan. I don't see how you leave Bianca Jackson. It was a player right in front of her who was looking in the paint, and Bianca Jackson's just like, well, I'm going to shoot. <laughs> Knocks down the three. Jackson on the season, and she's shooting over 30% from three. Tech as a team really hasn't shot the ball that well from distance. They're three for nine today. Aviance Carter on the floor, 15 and white. And Jackson the rebound. And right now, good job by Jackson to push the basketball to get it to Morgan. And that's more of what Georgia Tech needs to do, run in transition and see if they can get some good, easy looks. Put your head down and go. Right. Here's a look at Bianca's three. And I think that was just, Tenson just got, the song just got a little combobulated and just had a miscue, and then you see Jackson with the wide open three. Yeah, I think she lost track of where her defender, uh, her player was. She did. So 41-25, that fouls on Anika Weeks. And a home arena roll there for Tony Morgan, freshman from Tallahassee, Florida. Top 25 recruit coming out of high school. And you mentioned it earlier in the first half, but she's kind of the future point guard of this offense once she kind of finds her rhythm at the college level. She is. She's athletic, good size, and, and is aggressive. You know, she moves extremely well. I believe she was a track athlete in high school, too. So she can, she's an athlete, just has to become probably better ball skills, but get more comfortable in that point guard position. And she wasn't just a track athlete, any old track athlete. No. She was the national high jump champion. Let me stop. At 12 years, old, 12 years old. Yeah, I should have. I need to. <laughs> thanks for correcting me while I Hey, no, no, no. no you were right. You were she right. She wasn't an ordinary track athlete. She was a super no, track no, athlete. No, you were, you were spot on. We just got to make sure we get, <laughs> we, get, we get the resume and the credentials out there. 18-point lead for Georgia Tech back in a moment early in the second half. Night in, night out, and having another strong performance this afternoon, Fallon. She is, and she's just been consistent and steady, a good leader for this Georgia Tech team. But what I like about Jackson is that she doesn't take shots that she's uncomfortable with taking. She takes shots that are within the offense and that are shots that she's capable of knocking down. And right now, she's filling up the box score, 11 points, three rebounds, and four assists. Pretty balanced this afternoon. I don't think you'd be surprised to hear she's a coach's daughter. I know you're well aware. Oh, her, yeah. Her mother, Frida, a legend over at Alabama State, currently in her 25th season leading the Hornets. Yeah, that's a long time to be coaching basketball, especially with the generational gaps and, and understanding and being able to transition with different teams and players on your roster. But she's been incredible over her tenure as the head coach at Alabama State. Won Adonaz misses that short look. Taylor Anderson, nice moves on the ball here, guarded by Carter. Ooh, active hands, Tony Morgan. She reached up and picked it up the top shelf, and she'll go to the line for two. Sounds like that high jumping capabilities uh. you talked about earlier. <laughs> Able to get that deflection, but she is an athlete, and I know Coach Porter is excited to see that. Great anticipation coming off or following defensively and just like, I'm going to steal that basketball. She's not protecting it, and draws the foul and going to the free throw line for two shots, but... This freshman, very capable, very active, and is continuously getting better game by game for Georgia Tech. A little quieter offensively than she was on Sunday when she had 15 points, but look, I know she has room to grow from a point guard standpoint, but she's third on the team in scoring and third on the team in rebounding, second in assists. I mean, she's doing a lot of the right things here in her first semester as a Yellow Jack. Yeah, she is doing a lot of good things for this team, and you know, it's good as a freshman to take some of the pressure off of her having a player like Jackson and Swartz who can handle the ball as well, but it takes the pressure for her to grow, better understand the offense, and better understand her teammates and what Coach Fortner wants her to do in her role. Well, a big gift for Georgia Tech considering she's from Seminole country down in Tallahassee. Yeah, I'm surprised she got out uh -huh. of there. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Sue, I know she was recruiting her as well. Six minutes to go in the third quarter. Sydney Harris pops a three short. One and done possession there for Central Michigan. You okay with that shot selection? Eh, I mean it's it's within their it's within offense and what yeah. they like to do. They're gonna shoot threes. They're gonna shoot a lot mm -hmm. of them. And Sydney's gonna shoot a lot. Yeah. Of them. Hermosa turnaround jumper left it short. And that's her shot. Mm -hmm. You know we hope. I, well, I know Georgia Tech 
and their staff, they're hoping that she could be more consistent with that baseline jump shot because she's capable of knocking it down. Ball screen from Norris. Nothing there for Rutberg. Got a couple of towers going at it in the paint between Ramosa and Norris, both listed at 6'5". Curling in, too strong off the glass. Good offensive rebound by Taylor Anderson and the shot clock. And they're saying it hit the rim, but they're probably going to have to look at the replay. They're saying it hit the glass. I'm not sure they're going to look at the replay. They're not. They're just going to call it. Yep. <laughs> like we saw it. It hit the glass. It didn't hit the rim. So I, I guess they were contending maybe as it came down that it grazed the front of the rim, but I, I didn't. It happened so quick yeah. with the ball ricocheted. I can't tell you unless mm -hmm. I see a replay. Mm -hmm. Nice entry down to Hermosa. Mm -hmm. Nearly had a chance in three-point play. But. And that was a good lead pass to her by Jackson. Led her to the basket. She just couldn't finish. 20-point lead for the Yellow Jackets. Back home with Legend tells of a wishing star. You talk about letting off some steam during finals week and play some basketball, or you can be buzzed and go run around and take some selfies, mess with some, uh, some zipper vests. I know. Best zippers, I guess. <laughs> he's he's all, he's up to all sorts of shenanigans up there in the stands. Yeah, Buzz was over here earlier bothering us, but he was. Buzz has always been so active around this arena, but a, a fan favorite and great for the fans to interact with during these games. Ray Hermosa hits the first free throw. Georgia Tech is on an 8-0 run, all from the free throw line. They haven't made a bucket <laughs> in well, the last three plus minutes, but they've hit. Nine free throws now. They are 12 of 13 from the free throw line. And, and as you noted earlier, this is not a program that has had many 9-0 uh, runs without a field going a long time. <laughs> well, I guess you can, you take it how you can get it. And right now, Georgia Tech is remaining consistent but maintaining their lead of 22 in this one. But I would say in this second half, even though the scoring hasn't been, been there, the defense has. Central Michigan only has two points in this third quarter. Chippewas one of seven from the floor so far in this quarter with five turnovers. They've got a total of 17 on the day. And we're only about halfway through the third quarter. Georgia Tech, meanwhile, one of six from the floor. And they run out of time to shoot. And I just don't think the Chippewas and Janae Walker realize that the buzzer was up. Yeah, and that's a freshman mistake. You got to know your shot clock. You have at least a leader at the point position and, or a leader on the floor that can recognize that. You have to always know where that shot clock is. Those are unfortunate and, un and very costly turnovers. And, and one that really is under your control. Right. right. And that's what we talk about, you know, with, with a young team that Central Michigan has, you're going to have some turnover issues against some more veteran opponents, but there are some you can eliminate, and that would be one of them. Four minutes to play in the third quarter. Morgan feeds Swartz, uh, hanging, can't hit. Blackshear rising in for the rebound, and she draws the foul and, and may have drawn a, an elbow or something to the jaw. Yeah, it looks like she got hit in the mouth, but that was an aggressive move. She went up, skied up to get that rebound, that offensive rebound, and is able to draw the foul. If there's a little thing to be done, Kayla Blackshear's going to do it. She does the small things. She, she's a great asset for this Georgia Tech ball club. Now, I think it also shows you know you don't have to score 10, 12 points a night to be a productive. Exactly. And she doesn't complain, doesn't ask for the basketball, just simply plays the game and defends very well and rebounds. She knows her role and she plays it. And, and you talk to any coach at this level, you, you, you are not going to go very far without players like that. Right. A tough flat-footed jumper from Norris. She had too much on it. Morgan's going to push the pace here. Down to the lane. Has it swatted. Rochelle Norris, the junior from Stafford, Virginia, might have three fouls, but she's not playing any differently. I mean, she's so long. I mean, she was standing right there waiting for Morgan to get to the lane and then just swats it down. Not, not on my watch. Not mm -hmm. on my watch, freshman. <laughs> I love it. 
Anika Weeks off the front of the rim. Blackshear the board. In Central Michigan, they don't have anybody crashing when they take these outside shots. The only one who's really going after the rebounds is Norris. They all need to crash at this point. And instead of going to the lane, Morgan has a pull-up jumper, and she and it looked nice. drained it. It did. She did. She took her dribbles, came up, and just pulled. Utberg, a little too strong. Blackshear, another rebound. She's got seven of those now today. Matching Rochelle Norris's game, leading total of seven rebounds. That's impressive for a guard. Mm -hmm. And Dunn was wide open at the top of the key, decided to take a couple dribbles in. She probably could have taken a couple more to get closer, more within her range for that shot. Good quick step by Weeks. Can't quite finish, but she had an edge on Blackshear. And that was a good job for Blackshear to keep playing and to alter that shot. Mosa with the ball screen. And picks up the easy two points on the rebound. And that was a good aggressive move by Morgan, but Armosa was right there to clean it up. Central Michigan has gone now over seven minutes without a single point. This is a 13-0 run for the Yellow Jackets. Trying to find something offensively. Yeah, still only two points in this quarter, but you got to say or applaud Georgia Tech's defense in the third. They have been consistent playing good team defense and crashing the defensive boards hard, being able to limit Michigan, Central Michigan just to one shot. And you just see the numbers today. Georgia Tech, their scoring hasn't been great in this quarter, quarter, um, quarter either, but they have been consistent defensively to limit Central Michigan's opportunities. This is Central Michigan's ninth game of the season. They've been outscored in the third quarter by 85 points. It's been the biggest trouble spot for them. They've been much more competitive in the other quarters, but coming out of halftime, they just have not been able to find it, particularly offensively. They've right. really struggled to score in this period, not just today, but throughout the season. Right, and, and honestly, the third quarter in any basketball game, I think is the biggest quarter. Mm -hmm. When you come out of halftime, it's how the momentum you wanted to shift, especially if you're down at halftime, how you come out and how you play. Because I think it's going to be indicative of how you perform in the fourth. And that's a big shot. We, <laughs> Central Michigan <laughs> needed that. It's good to see that Sydney Harris is still on the court and, and willing to shoot some threes. And she has now made at least two or more threes in every game this year. That was her second today. Under 90 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Good handles by Morgan. Oops, turns it over. Yeah, not a good pass. Good hands. And Carrington Gordon, in her first minutes of the day, immediately makes an impact. And Gordon, a sophomore, but shows her athleticism, able to get that ball in that lane and finish. Done. With contact, gets the bucket, draws the foul. She'll go to the free throw line for one more. Going to go against Nadege Jean. And I like that decision by Dunn. She saw that Hermosa, Blackshear were on the opposite side, so she went to her right and went to her spot and is able to knock down the shot and get the and one. Just showing her athleticism and capability. Man, she can get up there and has a nice J. Three-point play for Kira Dunn. She's now got 10 points. A so, quiet 10. Mm -hmm. And just 13 minutes on the floor. Lisa Tesson over to Gordon. Kira Dunn with a steal. Good pass. Noredo at the other end. Kira Dunn's got her fingerprints all over this one. She does. And Noredo, I like her too. She comes in here and has... Quick hands, very aggressive defensively. She wants to get minutes, but she's an active player and brings a different type of energy when she's on the court. Foul on Hermosa. One more time. Look at this pass. That was a good pass and nice finish. Twenty seconds remaining in the third quarter. Michigan may try and practice an in-the-clock situation here. Nope, Harris is going to jack it up. Deep. Very deep. Not shy at all. That was <laughs> NBA range right there. I think she was on the GT. I think she was too. If nothing else, she was on the trademark. <laughs> Jackson at the buzzer. No. Ramosa tries to tap it in. But that ends the third quarter. Georgia Tech has stretched their lead.
to 26 points. Rocking out on a Sunday afternoon. Blow off some steam during finals week here on the flats as Georgia Tech blowing out the Chippewas, 56-30. I'm on my for Georgia Tech to try and get something going, more chemistry before they get into ACC play. Same thing with Central Michigan before they get into their conference play. Playing some solid competition, but trying to see if they can get something going and some team chemistry before they get into conference play. Central Michigan, meanwhile, they will uh, travel to Eastern Illinois next Sunday. Two o'clock game a week from today. She just has a nice shot, Harris does. She takes her time, but that rotation on the ball, she always gives herself a, a high percentage of knocking a shot down based on her rotation and her shot. I know touch is something I think a lot of people believe is sort of innate. How about mechanics of a shot? I mean, how much can you really improve how the ball comes out of your hands? No, you can definitely improve your mechanics. Oh, that was a big shot by uh -huh. Bianca Jackson behind the three-point line knocking it down, but as you continue to work on your mechanics and, and continually to shoot shots, it just becomes second nature. It, it's, it just becomes your shot. It's an innate fact or habit to have. And if you already have it, you just need to keep shooting it so it becomes consistent and you can knock down shots in the game. Here we see it again. That one a little too strong. Here comes Bianca Jackson. But she's never flat, Sydney Harris. Mm -hmm. You like the ball to have a lot more lift than it be being flat going to the basket. Hermosa down low, puts it on the floor, fade away, left it short. That's an area where she can really improve, right? She can, and she's capable of knocking down that shot. It's just not falling consistently for her like it may have a season ago. But then again, she'll have two and three players all over her when she's taking these shots sometimes. So she has to make the adjustment. Yeah, she's been, she's been better today. Eight points, 14 minutes. Oh, tough mm. shot for Central Michigan. Ball goes in and rolls right back out. Done. Noreto. Oh, that was smooth. She can shoot it too. I mean, she has... A lot of basketball experience playing internationally with the Spanish national team at a young age. So she's capable to come in and give good minutes. We've seen it defensively, but she can knock down shots as well. Yeah, she's now three for five this year from beyond the arc. Hutberg. Good hands, good block by Armosa. Ready for that move in the paint, but we see this right here. Great knockdown by Inez Norego. She's like threes, the bench is loving it. They're well in the hands. The love won't ironize <laughs> that. She's firing. <laughs> Shots fired. Oh, Norego. Picks off the inbounds pass. See a couple of new faces. Checking in on both sides, Cameron Harrison, her first minutes of the day. We've also seen from Michaela Hall. And Laredo's turning it on. She is. It is looking like the international game out here. Uh -huh. She is smooth going to the lane and knocking down the three, getting steals. These last couple of possessions have all been Noredo. Can you drop a Noredo, huh? <laughs> you slipped that past me a moment ago. <laughs> Harris lets it fly from a standing still pole position. It's kind of like a set shot, but mm -hmm. she gets so much air under the ball and lift. It's a high percentage shot for her no matter where she shoots it. Ball screen from Blackshear. Good pass. Oh. That's a tough, good hands by Harris to get a deflection, but that was a good look by Morgan trying to get the ball inside to Blackshear. Nine different Yellow Jackets have scored today. 11 different players have played today for Georgia Tech. 30 point lead for the Jackets. Three pointer from Harrison Bottoms. Hand in the face. Harrison was right there. That was just better, a better shot. Better offense, sometimes beat solid defense, and that's what we just saw from Sidney Harris. 
17 points today, a game high. We'll stick with Georgia Tech on the far end. Sydney Harris, she just does it so effortlessly. She makes it look easy on the offensive end, but she has a knack for scoring the basketball. Laredo tries to split defenders, has it ripped away. And they're going to call Kara Dunn for reaching in there. Nice effort by Michaela Hall. That was. I mean, she just got into this one, has some family in the stands, but that was a nice job. Gets the foul. Hopefully she can get something going to help Central Michigan to get some points on the board in this fourth. It's been the last four years at Southern Illinois Edwardsville, SIUE. Played 94 games. She started once this season, but appeared in every game now. Hall feeds it down low. Harris going to work on Naredo. What a move down low. I don't, I don't think we knew she had that uh -uh. in her arsenal. Uh -uh. That was, she went to the block <laughs> and, and did a nice move inside. Nice little hesitation, head fake, and finish. That was a pro move. Well, I can sure, I assure you Naredo didn't know she had that. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other end, Kayla Blackshear. Those two points, Georgia Tech has now matched their season high in scoring with five minutes to play. Kayla Hall, fearless. That's a tough shot. You had three Georgia Tech players in the paint. It's going to be a difficult finish. And Kara Dunn will be whistled for the travel. So with four minutes and 34 seconds remaining, this will be our final break. Georgia Tech 66, Central Michigan 39. Back in a moment on ACC Network Extra. Well, it's a 27-point lead for Georgia Tech, but the player that has uh, caught Fallon Stokes' eyes today is Sidney Harris, 19 points. Three from 10 from behind the arc, but it's not a shot that she's afraid to take. And she's had to take a lot of shots for this Central Michigan team this afternoon to try and keep this game somewhat competitive. But I tell you, her shot, it looks like a set shot, but she gets so much lift on it. She always, to me, would have a, or has a high percentage of knocking it down. And she even showed us a nice post move a couple possessions ago mm -hmm. with the <laughs> up and under fake looking like a pro. And the finish, that was the one time we saw her in the paint get a bucket. And you can do the math, too. We saw 35 minutes on that graphic. We got five minutes left or so. <laughs> She's basically playing every second of this one. She is. She's a freshman. She can play. <laughs> as long as she's not in foul trouble, keep it going. Great experience. First points for Janae Walker this afternoon, transfer from UCF. She had started three straight games up until today, coming off the bench. The pass by AC to Harrison. Yeah, AC, Evans Carter from Norcross, Georgia. One thing she's—I know that was a good pass there. Have you taken a look at her shooting numbers? She first two years she made just three threes. She's improved. Took a lot of them. She did. <laughs> but she's now four of ten this year from distance. She's really improved her shot, not just there, but also the free throw line. Yeah, I think you could just see what a season, a difference a season can make. And in the off season, she put in the work to improve that shot. And Coach Fortner talked about that—that that she's seen improvement in AC shot. You know, she's still working on trying to get consistent minutes, but she's a threat for Georgia Tech off the bench, and they're going to need her come ACC play. And there she is ripping down a rebound with a call to jump ball. It will belong to Georgia Tech. And so Fallon, as we wind down the final three and a half minutes of this one, and knowing the next time the Yellow Jackets take the floor, it will be in ACC play. What in your mind is the key to having a successful conference season well they already are showing that they're a solid road team so they're going to be prepared hopefully finals will be over by then but once you start ACC play it's just about getting after it and you know working on the game plan and executing it and that's what Georgia Tech has to continue to work on and try to do to prepare against a difficult BC it's not easy to go up there and steal a win from that team and that's going to be something that they're going to have to work towards in practice this upcoming week so they can be prepared next Sunday. And there'll be some extra juice in the building, I'm sure, given that Cameron Swartz, who spent the last four years at Boston College, returning home to face her old team. Yeah, that's going to be a big deal. Another big-time finish, and 
Harris is like, y'all need to give me the air one because I'm getting fouled <laughs> on these shots. But she's knocking them down, and that's impressive by a freshman. She has not gotten down this game, still being aggressive and playing hard. It was a little quiet in the third, but you have to say that was probably because of the defense Georgia Tech was playing on her. She's now scored 20 points in four straight games. Is that still the identity of this Georgia Tech team, you think, uh, even after Lorella Kubai and Little My Lot and leave? I mean, I think you can't really tell in non-conference play, mm. but once it gets to ACC play, and if they can still hold their own and holding teams to around 50 to 55 points a game, then that's going to speak volumes about the type of defense they play. Loretto with the bank shot. <laughs> Loretto is coming here and is hooping and producing this afternoon. She's like, hey, Coach Fortner, I need a few more minutes. <laughs> and she's now got seven points. The Jackets over the 70 point mark for the first time this season. And the Yellow Jackets, look, they've struggled to shoot the three this year, Fallon. I mean, Schwartz has been great, Jackson as well, but they haven't really had a third option. Well, in years prior, it's not like they shot the three no, well either. Wrong. You're not so wrong. I think with the consistency, when you have players like Swords and Jackson that could definitely get you a couple of threes per game, and it, it's not bad when you have Naredo coming off the bench and she can get some minutes and, and knock down some threes. But consistently with these freshmen, Morgan's not a three-point shooter, at least not yet. Neither is Dunn, but as they continue to progress, hopefully that's something that they can develop and have in their um, offensive arsenal. And Naredo had scored just eight points this season across the five games she played in. She's got 10 today, so a career high for her. Anika Weeks into the corner, pestered by Boswell. Now double team from Carter and Boswell. That's great defense. AC, a great dig to get down low to steal that basketball. Good decision by Naredo to pull out. Three-pointer from Carter won't go. Yellow Jackets retain possession on the offensive board from Raven Boswell. I think this is a good showing from Georgia Tech, especially coming back home after five games. Great showing in front of their home crowd. And a great team win. It's looking like they're going to take this one this afternoon from Central Michigan. But great team basketball. Coach Ford has been able to play her bench, give them some good, solid minutes as they prepare for ACC play next week. Kayla Hall draws the foul. Will be charged to Aviance Carter. It's her third. Central Michigan, as we mentioned, they will face Eastern Illinois a week from today on the road. And, you know, hopefully for Central Michigan, there's some things to build upon, especially that first quarter. You hung in there tough. And, and if nothing else, on the glass, it has not nearly been the disparity we saw when they faced Cleveland State. They were minus 20. So they just minus five against Georgia Tech. And I think, if nothing else, they've shown a little more toughness and physicality than Coach Osterley saw the last time out. I agree. And, and she's seen the effort this afternoon. This team has not gotten down. The ball may not have fallen, or they may not have gotten the calls they would have liked. But it's been a better showing from her team this afternoon. And Harrison, who stepped out of bounds, can't come back in and touch until she establishes being back inbounds. With 30 seconds left. Perhaps one more offensive possession for Central Michigan. And this is a teaching moment, seeing if they could get something in their offensive set with their players who typically play off the bench. And that looked like it hurt. Mm. Taking a minute yep, Tony Morgan. for Walker to, yeah. to readjust. Morgan went <laughs> right into her gut. And I know she was looking like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be an offensive. Wow. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Probably nine times out of ten. Georgia Tech can dribble it out and collect their eighth win of the season, their fifth straight. And they have a, a triumphant homecoming after a five-game road swing. They defeat Central Michigan 71-45, to the final score. And in the middle of finals week, the Yellow Jackets do not blink on the hardwood. They didn't, and they did exactly what they needed to do to get a home win that can give them some momentum going into ACC play and on the road again to Boston College. So I'm sure Coach Fortner 
is happy with, a, with her team's play this afternoon. Saw some things they need to continue to work on to improve.